following illustration is based upon competition rules used by the National Collegiate Athletic Association. While the general nature of using the Five Alive method is the same for USA Track and Field and the National Federation of State High School Associations, there are some variations. The International Association of Athletics Federations does not use the Five Alive method. For more information on these variations, please consult the relevant rule book or a registered national federation or certified USA Track and Field official. It's important to note that the Five Alive method can be used until the following conditions occur. In the National Federation, there are fewer than nine competitors remaining at a height change. In the NCAA, there are fewer than nine competitors remaining at any point during the round of jumping. In USATF, there are 12 or fewer competitors remaining at a height change. In the IAAF, Five Alive is not used. This scenario is based on a pole vault competition. 16 athletes have been entered into competition, and the starting height and bar progression are already inserted on the score sheet. After the warm-up period is concluded, you meet with the competitors to determine their starting height. It's usually a good idea to apprise them of the opening height prior to the warm-up period and to give them the first three or four bar heights in the progression. From your brief meeting, competitors Mathis and Peterson confirm that they will start jumping at the second height, 4.65 meters. To indicate that they're passing the first height of 4.50 meters, commonly known as opening height, Draw a line through all three boxes under the column on the score sheet. You now have 14 competitors remaining. Number the first five is shown. This will be the first live pool. You can use a marker of some kind to indicate which jumper is up, in this case, a yellow arrow. A good standard practice is to call the order of jumping. In this example, we would say, Anderson is up, Brown is on deck, Campbell is on hold, followed by Dawson and Enders. This gives a complete list of the current live pool. Anderson fails on his first attempt. Place an X in the first box under 4.50 meters on Anderson's row. We move the up marker to Brown and again call the up, on deck, and on hold jumpers. Brown fails on his first attempt. As before, place an X in the first box under 4.50 meters on Brown's row. Move the up marker to Campbell and continue. Campbell successfully clears the bar. Place a zero in the first box on his row and draw a line through the other two boxes. This isn't required, but it's helpful in keeping track of what competitors are still jumping at this height. Since Campbell was successful at 4.50 meters, he's removed from the active pool for the remainder of this round. Move the number three marker to the next eligible competitor, Falk. Move the up marker to Dawson. A note. It's helpful to the competitors to announce when someone new has been added to the pool. One way of doing this is to announce who is up on deck and on hold, and then something like, followed by Brown and Falk, now active. This lets the competitor know that they're now in the active pool. It's also a good practice to look in the direction of the competitor so that they clearly hear you when you're speaking to them. Dawson clears the bar in his first attempt. As before, places zero in the first box on his row, and draw a line through the other two attempt boxes at 4.50 meters. As we saw a moment ago, move the number four marker to the next eligible competitor, George. Move the up marker to Enders and call the complete order. Enders is up, Anderson is on deck, Brown is on hold, followed by Falk and George, now active. Enders misses. Enter the X to indicate the miss. Move the up indicator to Anderson for his second attempt. Anderson fails a second time. Indicate this by placing an X in the second box on his row. Move the up indicator to Brown. Brown clears the bar in his second attempt. Enter a zero in the second box and draw a line through the third attempt box under 4.50 meters. Falk is now up for his first attempt. Move the up indicator to him and move the number two indicator to Harris, who is now in the active pool. Falk misses on his first attempt. Move the up indicator to George. George clears the bar. As before, put a zero in the first box and a line through the second and third boxes under 4.50 meters. Move the up indicator to number five, Enders. Move the number four indicator to Isaacs and announce the order of jumping. Enders fails a second time. When Anderson is called up again, he indicates that he'll be passing his third attempt at this height. Draw a line through the last box in his rail under 4.50 meters. It's important to note that he still has one attempt remaining at a subsequent height. 
He's still in the competition, but has concluded jumping at this height only. Move the number 1 indicator to the next eligible jumper, in this case Jackson. Move the up indicator to Harris for his first attempt. Harris fails on his first attempt at 4.50 meters. Move the up indicator to Falk for his second attempt. Falk clears 4.50 meters on his second attempt. With Falk's clearance at 4.50 meters, he's removed from the active pool at this height. It also brings us down to eight competitors remaining at this height. At this point, under NCAA rules only, we would abandon five alive and go to a single rotation order. You may ask how we set the order so that we can accommodate those jumpers who have already taken attempts and those that have not. In consultation with the NCAA Rules Committee Secretary and longtime NCAA Rules Interpreter, the referee can make a determination as to how to proceed. In our simulation, since Falk was number three in the live pool, we'll finish the final two jumps in this round of the live pool and then begin single rotation. Isaacs would be the next jumper, followed by Enders, who was originally number five in the pool, followed by Harris, Jackson, Kling, etc. This maintains the relative order of jumping, as you can see from the blue numbers. It also affords Isaacs a bit more space, if needed, between attempts. Normally, Five Alive allows for four other attempts before a competitor must take another attempt. This retains the spirit of those conditions. Isaacs is up. He clears 4.50 meters. We now return to Enders for his third attempt. Enders fails on his third attempt and is subsequently out of the competition. Harris is now up for his second attempt. Harris fails for the second time. Jackson is now up. Jackson fails on his first attempt. Kling is the next jumper. Kling is successful. Lewis is now up. And he clears the bar as well. Newton is now up for his first attempt. Newton misses. Olds is the next jumper for his first attempt. Olds clears the bar successfully. We return to Harris for his third attempt at 4 meters 50. An important note, even though only three competitors remain in the competition, we do not extend the time between attempts. This is the same for all jurisdictions. Harris fails and is eliminated from the competition. Jackson is now up for his second attempt. Jackson clears the bar. Newton is the only remaining competitor. Since this is his second attempt, and it's not consecutive, he has the standard amount of time to complete the attempt. Newton fails on his second attempt. Please refer to the information box. When an athlete is taking consecutive attempts at the same height, the time between attempts is extended. In this example, Newton would have three minutes before he must initiate his third attempt at 4.50 meters. In the case of the pole vault, this period would begin once the bar is placed and the standards are set. After the allotted time, Newton fails on his third attempt. Jumping is concluded at 4.50 meters. The bar is now raised to the next height, 4.65 meters, and the order of jumping is reset. Since we have 13 competitors remaining at this height, we return to 5 alive and number the athletes as shown. It's important to remember that Anderson, by virtue of passing his third attempt, will have only one attempt at this height. Should he fail, he's eliminated from the competition since it would be his third consecutive miss. If he clears 4.65 meters, he remains in the competition. 